Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to do how to create a function in R. We're going to talk just briefly about global versus local variables, and then we're going to touch on a few other aspects kind of of the environment, getting used to using R in our studio, but let's dive on in. Okay, so to start off here, this is going to be the screen you see. There's always this kind of warning or information at the beginning. Uh, again, we're going to hit Control L to clear the screen and we're going to start learning how to create our first function. To start off with though, and to make this a little easier, if you go up here to the top, you'll see like a plus sign on a sheet, uh, this little arrow, you can click that and click R script. Okay, it's going to open this window up here. This is how we are going to type code and this is how we're going to save code. Um, and so we can come back and look at it later or do additions to it. Um, but this is just how we create a project and save what we've written. And something else I didn't mention in the first video is how to do comments. So if you do a hashtag or an octothorpe here, um, you can type in some comments. So today we're going to say, hello, today we are going to build a simple function. Okay, so anything you type up here is just going to be saved like a text file. You can copy it and paste it below. And when you hit enter, nothing happens. Okay, it's just a note to whoever's reading the code. Um, notes are crucial in programming as they will remind you what you were trying to do or if there's a problem. So a lot of times I create notes when I'm building some function, it's not working correctly, but I need to go do something else. I will put a note like um, I did X, Y, and Z, and then this problem came up and then I just leave the note there. And then when I come back later, the notes can be handy to figure out what I was working on. But today we're gonna to build um, our first function. And our first function we're gonna build is going to be something to convert inches to centimeters. So this is a super simple example, um, but you can make these really complex and they can have a whole series of different actions inside of there. So you could like do some calculations, you could plot some charts, you could output some tables and do all of that inside of one function. But just to get started, we're gonna talk about a simple function here. So first off, we start off with the function name. We're gonna call this convert inches to centimeters and I should note too that R is case sensitive so I'm using a capital I and a capital C uh, this is just my notation if you type it differently and then you put it into the code and the capitalization is different uh, it might not work because R is going to be case sensitive but we type in the function name we type in the less than dash sign again so we're assigning it some value and we're going to type in function so function is actually a function used to create other functions um, and then you put a parentheses and then you put in your attributes so anything that we would like to feed into the function so the function can use it for calculations or manipulations or anything you would type it in here so today we're just going to use x um, if you wanted to add other ones you could do like y z I don't know, you could put some other name here. You could do all kinds of things. But today we're just gonna have one argument that goes in and that argument is going to be the number of inches and that's gonna output the centimeters. Um, and then we put a curly bracket and you click enter and it will automatically move the other curly bracket down and give us extra space here to type what we want the function to do. So let's call this final. This is gonna be what we're actually calculating. And this is going to be X, which is whatever we put into the function multiplied by 2.54. So 2.54 inches is going to give us our centimeters. And after it does this calculation here, we want it to return something. So I want it to give me something back. What I want it to give me back is whatever the number is called final, and it will pop up here as that's what we just created. And so this is gonna be our first function. And we're going to highlight it and we're going to copy it from our text window here and we're going to paste it below and we're going to hit enter okay so to note a few things here you notice that we normally have an arrow where we start some line of code but now we have pluses um, the pluses just indicate that this is essentially one line of code so r will execute this all at once however it allows you to continue to type multiple lines without hitting enter and we'll see a lot of the plus signs when we're adding functions together and plotting in R later. Um, but something simple from our first lesson is A, and then we're gonna combine one, two, and then we'll delete this parentheses here. So we have a comma indicating that like we're gonna add another value. 
but you can type in plus and hit enter and it will carry the plus down here and then you can do three four five and the parentheses so this is going to be the same as a is assigning the value of combining one two three four five hit enter um, you can see up here we have a which is going to be our values one two three four and five um, yeah you can print out a by hitting a and it'll print out the values one two three four five this is just a side note for you guys what the pluses mean but you can kind of just realize what they are and then continue to program uh, it's best practice a lot of times to type it up here and then just copy and paste below but anyways we want to test this function so we would know for example um, that we want to create some test so let's write in our code here for best practices testing the function and then what we're going to test here is convert inches to centimeters and it'll automatically come up and say global environment uh, and then we want to put some value in so we know for example if we put in one into the function we should get back 2.54 so let's copy this and paste it below we get 2.54 uh, let's test something else similar so you can copy this paste it here and let's put in 10 um, 10 times 2.54 should give us 25.4 we get 25.4 okay so we know this works now let's create a second function and let's do this backwards now. So let's convert um, centimeters to inches here. So let's just put a note here, convert centimeter to inches. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna write the function name, but we're gonna call it centimeters to inches. And we're gonna assign this value a function. We're gonna input something called x and then a curly bracket, click enter, and then we want to write our function again. Um, let's call this one final n for inches. And we know this will be x divided by 2.54. And then we want it to return something again. So if we just put this in, it would do a quick calculation and it would create something called final n, but we'll talk about why that's not useful in a second. And we're gonna return, um, final in here so let's copy and paste this into our uh, command below okay that ran we can see up here it's come up um, and again we can type in you know testing the function and to do this let's do the opposite of what we did above so let's do convert centimeters inches but let's do 2.54 and we should get back one right so you can put a little note here and put expecting the answer to be one okay and then we'll copy this we'll paste this below we get one um, you can use these to do crazier things so let's just say uh, we want to do a really big number here we could convert um centimeters to inches and we could do something i don't know let's say 323.342 okay we can use this we can run the calculation you get 127.3 and if you wanted to run the inverse of this here right we could type in convert inches and we could put in 127.3 and we should be getting out uh, 323.342, and we do. Okay, so we've written these functions, we've done some testing, which is important when you write a function, right? You wanna make sure it's doing exactly what you think it's doing, um, but that's just kind of the basics here of the function. So now let's try something different here, and let's talk a little bit about global versus local variables. Um, in these functions, right, I have something called final, I have something called x, um, let's just try to print these and see what happens we're going to just talk about global versus local bars so variables here and i guess we can put it in here so we want to see what final is going to be so we can type down final here in the bottom and we can hit enter and it's going to say error object final not found okay 
The reason that it's not found, even though we've already ran this function and we already created a variable called final and it did return our value that we asked for, it's not going to exist. And the reason being is that when we type code down here in the command lines, it's going to give us um, global variables. So the difference between local and global variables is going to be kind of a scope thing. They call it scope. So anything up here in the top right, this is going to be our global environment. So A is a global variable. These two functions are global variables. This means anywhere in the code, we can call A, we can call these different functions we created. And what we're gonna end up with is some value or some function. Final though is a local variable. So final here is local to the function convert inches to centimeters. So it will only exist in this local realm of this function. So when this function is called, so for example, when we call this function here, what it's gonna do is it's going to take the value one that we passed to it, it's gonna plug it in for x, it's gonna multiply by 2.54, it's gonna create a new variable called final, and that final is going to be 2.54. And then if we didn't put return here, what would happen is it would just stop running and it would delete final before it closes the function itself and you would get nothing. So that's why calling the return function is important because it takes the value of final and it returns it to us in the global environment. But again, it does delete this final because final is a local variable. So something you can do, but I highly discourage in most scenarios is down here in the second function, we could have also called this final. Instead of final inches, it would have been completely okay. Everything would have worked exactly as expected because again, it would create final and then it would return the value of final, it would delete the variable final, and then we could call a different function. So for example, we could call this one again, and it would never be confused because those local variables get deleted inside their local environments. You cannot call them in a global environment. So this is a little bit different than other languages, like lower level languages, for example, like C++. C++ requires that you define these things, and yes, there are defaults in different languages. So for example, in our scenario, final is by default set up as a local variable. We don't need to tell R that it's local, um, but just keep in mind as we get moving through some of these lessons, sometimes you can't call things that you've created inside of other things because they will be local. Um, and so if you want something, we can create it in the global environment. So let's just put a note here, error because final is a local variable, okay? And now let's say we want to take something that we've created. So let's create a new variable. We already created A, but that's not gonna do very well in our function here. Uh, let's create something called B, and let's create um, B such that it is equal to 25.4. And so if we copy and paste this now, uh, we're gonna end up with B up here and our global values here, and it's 25.4. Okay, so we've created B and it's 25.4. Now let's pass B um, to centimeters, to inches, okay? And we're gonna highlight this. We're gonna paste it here. Um, before we do that though, the expected, you don't need to write this note, but the expected value here is 10. So we should be getting 10 out of here if it works. You click enter, we get 10. So you can see here you can pass macro variables into functions, which is extremely useful as we get going here. But that's just kind of the basics here of how to create a function. Um, these are super simple. I would encourage you guys to play with these, create something you know a little more dynamic maybe. Um, you could create something that has a longer function or a longer calculation inside of your function. But that's just the basics of how functions work. Um, a little bit about what global variables are versus local variables. Anyways, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.